We are in April, and today we enjoy the sun, guys, in Ponte Sant'Angelo. Ponte Sant'Angelo Bridge connecting Castel Sant'Angelo to the city center is one of the most famous bridges in Rome. Today, in this video, you will be discovering everything about its history, its architecture, its name, the angels on top of it, and also the legends and facts linked to it. Ponte Sant'Angelo Bridge might not be the most ancient in Rome. Pons Fabricius holds this record, but obviously it's still very old. It was erected by the Emperor Hadrian in the 2nd century with the purpose to give monumental access to his funerary mausoleum, Castel Sant'Angelo, built beyond the Tiber from Rome's pulsing heart and historic center. Originally, the bridge was used mainly as a passageway to visit and pay respect to the tomb of the Emperor. Only gradually, with time and with the Hadrian mausoleum also playing different roles including stronghold, residence, and prison, also the bridge became the theater of several historical events. During the Middle Ages, Castel Sant'Angelo was used as a stronghold, so the bridge was equipped with a fortified tower. The jubilee of the year 1450 was marked by a tragedy. When the bridge was being crossed by a myriad of pilgrims, coming and going to the Vatican, a shying horse or mule caused a widespread panic and the crowd amassed against the railings, making them collapse. Many people fell on the river and the incident caused almost 200 dead. On this occasion, Pope Niccolo V ordered to place two chapels at the entrance of the bridge, one devoted to St. Mary Magdalene and one to the Holy Innocents. The chapels remained there for less than a century because in 1533, Pope Clement VII made them replaced with two marble statues of Saints Paul and Peter that we can still see today. Three years later, the city needed some sprucing up here and there for the arrival of the Emperor Charles V. And one of the places to be revamped was once again the Sant'Angelo Bridge. Pope Paul III ordered that the bridge would be adorned with eight statues, four representing the evangelist and the other four the patriarchs Adam, Abraham, Noah and Moses. The statues were in stucco work, so they wore out pretty quickly. In 1668, Pope Clement IX put the leading artist Gian Lorenzo Bernini in charge of a full renovation of this bridge. In its long history, the Ponte Sant'Angelo Bridge was crossed by countless pilgrims who wanted to pay their respect to St. Peter's tomb but also by many popes, kings, queens, world leaders, by some of the biggest Italian and world artists such as Dante Alighieri, Michelangelo, Bramante, Botticelli, Copernico, Torquato Tasso and several saints, including San Filippo Neri and Santa Rita da Cascia. Originally, the bridge was called the Pons Helium, after the emperor himself, Publio Elio Adriano, while in the Middle Ages its name was changed to Ponte San Pietro, St. Peter's Bridge, because it was the direct connection between the Vatican to the city and the shortest way to reach the tomb of St. Peter. Its current name, however, is more ancient and dates back to 590 CE. This is when, according to tradition, Pope Gregory I saw the Archangel Michael on top of the Adria Mausoleum, drawing his sword. This was taken as the definitive sign to announce the end of the deadly plague that had been raging in Rome for two years. 
This is when both the castle and the bridge were dubbed Sant'Angelo. The current look of the Ponte Sant'Angelo bridge was reached in the late 19th century. Before that, the bridge was made of three large central arches flanked by two smaller ones on the edges. The original bridge was made in peperino, coated with travertine, and consisted of three arcades accessible through ramps from the river shores. The ramps were supported by small arches on both shores, but were destroyed during the complete renovation launched around 1892-93, when they built the river banks. After demolishing the small arches, they built other two large arcades on both sides, identical to the three central vaults. Now, Ponte Sant'Angelo Bridge consists of five large brickwork arcades. It is 130 meters long, 426 feet, and 9 meters wide, 30 feet. Back in the 17th century, along with architectural changes, Bernini added 10 marble statues to the two of Saints Peter and Paul already standing at the entrance. These are 10 angels representing the symbols of the Passion of Christ. The 10 angels of Ponte Sant'Angelo Bridge were carved by Bernini and his pupils. They are arranged in couples and bear inscriptions from the Old Testament on their base. Starting from Castel Sant'Angelo, you will see the first couple of angels. The one on the left is holding the lance that pierced Jesus' side. The second angel holds the sponge soaked with vinegar that a soldier gave him instead of water. Moving forward, we find the second couple of angels. The one on the left is holding Jesus' cross. The angel on the right side holds the mocking INRI title. Carrying on, we find the third couple of angels. The one on the left is holding the nails used to crucify the Christ. The angel on the right side is holding Jesus' tunic. Keep going and you will find the fourth couple of angels. The one on the left is holding the veil where Jesus left his blood. The one on the right is holding the crown of thorns.
Finally, we are at the fifth couple of angels. This symbolizes the flogging suffered by Jesus. The angel on the left holds the pillar Jesus was tied to. The angel on the right holds the scourge the Christ was flogged with. With such a long history, so many events that happened there, and the fact that it's in a city so full of tales and mysteries like Rome, it's no wonder that there are so many legends around Ponte Sant'Angelo Bridge. Ponte Sant'Angelo Bridge is fully pedestrian, just like in ancient times, when it was close to chariots and only accessible on foot. One of the functions of the Ponte Sant'Angelo Bridge has been to display the bodies of the people sentenced to death and executed in Ponte Sant'Angelo Square on the side of Lungotevere degli Altoviti, starting from the year 1500, with some 18 men hanging at the entrances. Ponte Sant'Angelo was so busy and crowded during the Jubilee years that even Italy's biggest poet, Dante Alighieri, mentioned it in his Divine Comedy. In his travels through hell, we can read in rhymes and verses his chronicle of pilgrims crossing the bridge to and from St. Peter's Basilica in the year 1300, the first jubilee announced by Pope Boniface VIII. One of the most famous people executed in front of Castel Sant'Angelo was the young Roman patrician Beatrice Cenci, beheaded on September 11, 1599. Every year, on this same night, the ghost of Beatrice Cenci is believed to wander around the bridge, holding her head in her hands. Saints Peter and Paul became talking statues. Rome has several well-known talking statues, but these at the entrance of Ponte Sant'Angelo Bridge are not enlisted among them. On one occasion, and one only, these two became talking statues. This happened under the rule of Pope Sixtus V, famous for being very strict and very little forgiving, to the extent that one morning the statues were bearing a sign talking about leaving Rome because they worried that the pontiff would take revenge for something that happened 1585 years earlier. Two of the angels decorating the sides of Ponte Sant'Angelo Bridge, namely the one with the INRI inscription and the one with the crown of thorns, were made by Bernini himself. They were considered too beautiful to be exposed to the moods of the weather, so they were replaced by copies made by his pupils. More precisely, the one with the crown was made by Paolo Naldini, while the one with the INRI mocking title by Bernini himself, aided by his student Giulio Cartari. The originals remain the property of the Bernini family and in 1729 his nephew 
Prospero Bernini, donated them to the Church of Sant'Andrea delle Fratte, near the Spanish Steps, where we can admire them still today. The night between the 12th and the 13th of July, 1881, when the funerary parade was crossing Ponte Sant'Angelo Bridge, carrying the body of Pope Pius IX, who had died in 1878, the carriage with his coffin was attacked by a group of anti-clericals who wanted to throw the dead pontiff on the river. The best time to photograph Ponte Sant'Angelo is in the morning if you arrive from Flaminio or Piazza Cavour, because the sun will be behind you. Coming from Trastevere, it's best to photograph Sant'Angelo Bridge in the afternoon. Opt for this side of the bridge for fantastic night photography and shots during the blue hour. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and check out romactually.com for more tips on how to make your own trip unforgettable.